Hello, lovely learners. How are you all doing today? I salute you all on behalf of management of Princess Anna Memorial School, and we continue with our virtual learning. I hope you remember in our previous lessons, we talked about farming system, and I asked you simple questions. Some of you are not even aware how to get into the house or into the kitchen. Now, today we are continuing with our virtual learning and on the topic farming system. Because it's through farming system that we can get food to feed ourselves and our families. And therefore, we need to take this topic very serious. Now, I'll continue to urge you so that by the end of the lesson, we should be able to explain the following types of farming systems. That is crop rotation, pastoral farming, and monoculture. I hope you remember that in our previous lessons, we talked about some of the farming systems, the various systems. Today we are continuing with the rest of the systems. And two, we should be able to outline the principles of crop rotation. And finally, you should be able to draw a plan for a crop rotation program. This is what we are expecting to achieve at the end of today's lesson. And therefore, I will urge you to pay attention to this lesson. Now to move on, what is crop rotation? Crop rotation is a system of farming in Ghana in which different types of crops are grown in different plot on the farm in definite sequence or cycle. It's a system of farming in which different types of crops are grown in different plots on the farm in definite sequence or cycle. It means that if you have a farm or a piece of land, you divide that land into plots. And this is the farming system we are talking about here. And once you divide your farm into plots, you plant different crops. You know we have different types of crops. You can mention some. We have yam, we have cowpea, we have tomato, we have maize, and the rest that you can mention. And that is crop rotation. Now let's look at advantages in practicing this type of farming system. You can see that soil erosion is checked or controlled. Because of the various crops that are mixed on the farm at the same time of the year or season. For example, cover crops are included and therefore they check what we call soil erosion. And two, there is effective use of land. We don't waste the land. Three, soil fertility is also maintained. And weeds are easily controlled as well. But you know, we have disadvantages as well. So one advantage, disadvantage is that some farmers cannot practice this type of system because skills are required in order to put all these crops on a piece of land or on a plot. Farmers, most farmers or some farmers cannot practice this type of farming system because skills are required to control the system. And two, it becomes difficult to carry out cultural practices since different crops are involved. And what is cultural practice or what are cultural practices? Cultural practices are all the activities that are performed on the land or on the farm after planting of seedlings or seed until harvesting is done. That is cultural practices. And you can mention the practices that or the activities that are involved. Watering is involved, weeding, pruning, staking, fertilizer application. And remember, if you have different crops on the farm, applying fertilizer becomes difficult because most of the crops may not like or may not withstand the fertilizer or a particular fertilizer. And this makes the whole practice or system a bit challenging. That is crop rotation. Now before we move on to the principles of crop rotation, let me quickly explain pastoral farming. 
pastoral farming is a system of farming in which a farmer a farmer rear animals such as cattle and move them from place to place in search of food, especially during the dry season. And this system is mostly practiced at the northern part of the country. It's a system of farming in which a farmer keeps farm animals or rare farm animals such as cattle and move them from place to place in search of food, especially during the dry season. That is pastoral farming. A monoculture is a type of farming system in which a particular type of crop is repeatedly grown on a piece of land year after year or season after season. For example, if a farmer is planting yam, yam continues to be on the farm or he continues to practice it or plant it year or season after season. That is the crop, uh, or sorry, that is the monoculture for you. An advantage is that the farmer is able to specialize in that system. Now let's uh, look at the principles in crop rotation. As I told you, crop rotation is a system of farming in which different crops are grown in different plots on the farm in definite sequence or cycle. And therefore, we need to understand the system well. So we have the principles or the lay down procedures for this system to be practiced. And that is the principles of crop rotation. They are lay down procedures which enables the farmer to be able to practice the farming system work. Here are some of the principles. One, deep rooted crops such as cassava should be followed by shallow rooted crop such as tomato. So it means that if you have a piece of land or a farm and you divided it into plots, let's say if this plot one is yam, the following or the next crop that you follow should be a shallow rooted crop for, because yam is a deep rooted crop and therefore it should be followed by a shallow rooted crop so that nutrients are not lost or make use by the crop. Remember, whatever you plant in the soil uses the nutrients in the soil. So if you plant deep rooted crops, they make use of maximum nutrients. And when you follow it with another deep rooted crop, that crop is also going to make the same use of the nutrients and, uh, 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 and the nutrients in the soil is going to be affected. And therefore, Deep rooted crops should be followed by shallow rooted crops. Now, the number two principle is that crops that belong to the same family should not follow each other. For example, cereals, we have the maize, the rice, the wheat, and the rest. They belong to the same family, and therefore, they shouldn't follow each other on the farm. Or let's say season after season. The third one is that leguminous crops like cowpea and granite should be added in the program or on the farm so that they can add nitrogen into the soil and making sure that the soil is the soil nutrient is maintained. That is leguminous crops. And the fourth principle is that fallow period should be allowed during the time of rotation. What is fallow period? Fallow period is a period or a time that is given or is allowed by a farmer for the land to regain its soil fertility or nutrients. It's just a, a period that the farmer leaves the land uncultivated so that the land can regain its soil nutrients. And that is fallow period. Now let's quickly look at a four year rotation program for the following crops. How to draw rotation program. Using yam, cowpea, tomato, and maize. I hope you know these crops and you have uh, tasted them or you have been eating them in your various homes. Now let's look at how we can plan our farm with these crops. 
So we have a piece of land or we have our farm here and we have, uh, let's say we have the plot. We divided the farm into four plots. Plot one, plot two, plot three, plot four. In that order. So yes, let's say the first year, let's say this year, the first plot, I planted yam. The second plot was cowpea. The third plot was tomato. And the fourth plot was maize. This means that in the following year, when I'm cultivating, or after harvesting, if I want to cultivate again or replant the various crops on the land, that is the second year. I'm going to plant cowpea on this land or this plot. I'll put cowpea. On this plot, I'm going to put tomato. This side, I'll put maize. And this plot, I'm going to plant yam. That is how I'm going to make it. Now the third year, if I'm, I want to replant, I'm going to put tomato here. I'm going to plant tomato here. I'm going to plant maize here. I'm going to plant yam here. And I'm going to cultivate cowpea on this plot. Then the fourth year or the last year in my practice of crop rotation program, Plot one, I'm going to plant maize. Then, plot two, I'll follow it with yam. Plot three, I'm going to follow it with cowpea. And plot four, I'm going to put tomato here. So you can see the sequence. And make sure that each year, the crops are not repeated on the piece of plot. And this is what we call crop rotation program. This is a four, four year crop rotation program. I hope you have enjoyed today's lesson. And this is where time will permit us to end our lesson for today. God bless you for paying attention. Until we meet again, take good care of yourself and bye bye.